Hey Booktube! Today I'm going to do a totally not blind page 112 reading. Uh, this is totally not blind because if you're observant you'll probably know what my last video was and exactly what I'm reading from, but if not, ah, this will be blind for you and you can just sit back and relax and read and then uh, go back and find out what I thought. But yeah, I just thought I, there might be an opportunity here just like I'm terrible at giving quotes from books and this is me giving a random full page quote from a book and you get an idea of what it's like and then I'll do a little discussion afterwards because I did my review and then after I never I try not to look at other people's reviews beforehand because I'm a weak-minded fellow and I would immediately just suck up their opinions and stuff like that but it's also interesting to bounce off of other people's opinions so I'm going to read this and then I'm going to kind of reflect on how other people felt about this particular book book after revealing of course to you what the book is if you don't know it already because you're just a devoted fan so yes this is page 112 which i of course am getting from sean the book maniac he's made this uh, tag called the 100 and, uh, page 112 tag which uh, i can I'll give you the link and you can hear the whole rationale and the french prize that it's based on so yes here's a reading from page 112 from this book um you know, your German is pretty terrible, Bastian tells him. Not true. It is not perfect, perhaps, Les tells him. But it is excited. The young man laughs freely, sitting up in bed, brown skin reddened on his shoulders and his cheeks from his time in the solarium. See, I don't know what you're talking about. Excited? Excited, Les explains, pulling on his underwear. Enthusiastic. Yes, you talk like a child. You look and act very young. He reaches one hand out to catch Les's arm and pulls him to the bed. Maybe you never grew up. Maybe he never did. Les knows so well the pleasures of youth, danger, excitement, losing oneself in a dark club with a pill, a shot, a stranger's mouth, and, with Robert and his friends, the pleasures of age, comfort and ease, beauty and taste, old friends and old stories and wine, whiskey, sunsets over the water. His entire life he has alternated between the two. There is his own distant youth, that daily humiliation of rinsing out your one good shirt and putting on your one good smile, along with the daily rush of newness, new pleasures, new people, new reflections of yourself. There is Robert's late middle age of selecting his vices as carefully as ties in a pair of shop, napping in the sunlight on an afternoon, and getting up from a chair and hearing the creak of death the city of youth, the country of age. But in between, where Les is living, that ex-urban existence, how has he never learned to live it? I think you should grow a beard, the young man murmurs later. I think you should would be very handsome. So he does. So I cheated there and I did a little bit at the end. And obviously this is from, if you can't guess, from Les, the Pulitzer Prize winning book uh, by Andrew Sean Greer, which I reviewed in my last video and loved and was frustrated and kind of made me angry at the same time. And I just thought, I of course, after I've made my own review, I want to kind of go out and find out what everyone else is doing. It was a little bit sparse on BookTube. Um, some of the stuff of just like the newspapers of record, the New York Times said like, you know, uh, like Arthur, Andrew Sean's Greer Less is excellent company. Company. It is no less than bedazzling, bewitching, and be wonderful. The Washington Post, Less is the funniest novel you'll read this year. Uh, Guardian, noting that because it had won the prize, it actually gets got published in Britain, says, uh, Greer mercilessly screws the, skewers the insecurity of authors as well as the vanity of literary, of the literary industry's self, self-absorption in the face of its irrelevance to most people's lives. The stealthy genius of this novel is that it simultaneously tells the life story of a basically sweet man whom the industry has eaten alive. Novels about novelists are always a risk, but less is about anyone who has allowed their calling to define them at the expense of their humanity. Writers may blush in the mirror it holds up to them, but may, many readers will find finding it as endearing as the very best of Armistad Maupin. Uh, the Independent. I'd be lying if I said I, I was laughing out loud while I read, but Les is witty, wise, and wistful in equal, equal measures, sometimes all in the space of one page. So those are all very, very positive reviews. Um, kind of a, one more, a little bit more in a, kind of a nuanced way, I think, uh, is the New York Journal of Books. This is uh, Vinton Rafe McCabe, who said, 
you know, if, if it's anything less, if it's anything less is lovely, is a lovely hand painted matroska, a cluster of wooden dolls all cluttered within one another. And, you know, it says like, you know, how he's, um, he's a really one hell of a wordsmith, which I think you can get from that, from that thing of, of him bouncing back between the eight, you know, his, his youth and the age of his, you know, youthful, youthful less, and then kind of uh, his youth and then a kind of age with his older lover, Robert. Um, you know, and it's like, there are sentences here that make the reader's eyes pop, but thus the reader is left unsure exactly how to conclude, except perhaps in avoiding a trite ending all of my own. He found the ending kind of rather trite. I mean, it does sort of end in a, sort of the way it has to end, in, expected, but it does make it, I don't know. But so, except perhaps in avoiding a trite ending of its own, less should have been more to say that what frustrates is that a writer of great talent has allowed himself to call finish something that needed to go higher, faster, further in order in order to get to, to work. And of course, my phone has decided to blink off at this point. And will it let me get back into it or will not? No, no, I will have to wing it from here. So yeah, so there was... So there was, uh, there was definitely all these things of less was more, yes, it's saying that less was more than the sum of its parts. So, you know, that was, that was sort of the, the word on the street in the, in the newspaper industry, I suppose. Uh, on BookTube, um, I think I probably learned about this from, um, both, uh, Meg, uh, Meg, uh, the book prize addict, uh, now reading and knitting on the porch and her very enthusiastic of, I think she got halfway through the book and she'd been really enjoying it. Uh, and Steve Donahue, um, who, um, you know, he was delighted over at winning the Pulitzer Prize. And indeed he um, put it as one of his top picks for fiction in, in 2017. Um, and so the thing about the book is it's definitely very much, if you haven't watched my other video, less is a lot, is a lot about, this is a, uh, gay 50 year old white male and him not feeling wanted in this in this world of he, him not being the hot thing him not being the hot new thing and and uh feeling passed over i suppose and uh maybe uh feeling ill used that his 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 uh literary his his literary um value is getting kind of getting left behind uh in favor of writers who maybe don't have as much of a literary talent but are um, more um fighting for social change or have uh, new stories that are uh, newer than being a white cis male in the world and and um me finding that i found the book frustrating kind of angering that it 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 was it sort of it's it insisted on stopping and bemoaning this fact versus uh, just by its own merits, uh, earning my enthusiasm, earning my interest in me being a, not gay, but uh, being a 50-year-old cis white male and, uh, and um, you know, saying like, hey, you had me with your writing, you had me with your story, I'm, I was interested, but you meant to, you had to, you had to kind of, um, you had to... Um, kind of pull in all this stuff saying, no, I need to be, I need to be the special child. I need to be the one held up on the pillar, which ironically enough, of course, less than won the Pulitzer Prize. It became the special, the special kid of this year. It found its uh, slot. It was, it, for some reason, politically, see, now this is the thing of um, the other very notable reaction to this book on BookTube was uh, Matthew uh, Scrappa, Scrappa, um, I apologize deeply, um, who really found, made this book, made him grumpy. This ma book made him like, why did this book get pulled out? That, um, him, um, there's somewhat, so, somewhat like him, him, like, I think I'd said in my past last video that, uh, you know, I found the literary merit of this book quite high. Uh, while I found this sort of this begging the question of like, oh, I'm a poor, poor white cis male who's not being treated treat treated as a special special guy uh anymore and that there's other other people that are getting treated better but they may not have the literary stuff i found that that dragged it down whereas he found that he didn't find much literary merit in it or and he also didn't find uh he found that message also annoying so he really took against the book i think i can say i will definitely put a link down below to so you can actually see and you can hear his words on this on this book in his own his own words, because he does a really good job of, I think, expressing that. Um, it was interesting. I, I felt like this is one of these books where if it hadn't won the Pulitzer Prize, he'd be having a different conversation about it. This was very much also a dialogue 
uh, Matthew was having much uh, having as much of a dialogue with the Pulitzer people as he was with Andrew Sean Greer. Um, in that, in that, um, in that, in that, it was um, the Pulitzer people were obviously making a political statement. Every act is a political act. We're making a political statement by selecting this book that said, "Hey, here's a book by this this author who is." saying, no, I should be special, or I don't know if that, I should be special, but saying, hey, I have literary talent, and we should only be judging me on, we should only be judging on literary talent, all this other stuff shouldn't count, um, which, you know, I think, I think, you know, people say, oh, I want to just judge, judge literature just solely on its literary merit, and I'm above all this other stuff, it's like, I find that to be not credible. I think that I was attracted to this book because I'm a 50 year old guy who's like, Oh, I'm kind of uh, almost 50. I'm almost 50. I'm 49. Very, very important. Um, it's, I, I was attracted to the book for that reason. And probably, you know, Hey, you know, I, I can own up to that. I'm going to be interested in certain stories. I'm not going to be interested in other stories. Yes. Maybe I should open my up to other stories, but I'm going to have my own interests. I could very easily be somebody who is me, but I'm only interested in stories from from um, Asian writers, and exclusively, and ignore white writers. Um, but no, I'm who I am. I have my own interests, and as a collective, as a collective, as a society, we get our we get attention gets paid in different areas. Uh, I found it interesting that you know I think um, one of the things Matthew was saying is like, wow this won the Pulitzer Prize, whereas like the year before the Underground Railroad had had won the prize. And it was just interesting to look at, uh, just going very, very rough, non-scientific, but saying stuff like on on Goodreads uh, that um, Less, which, you know, published in 2017, had 6,980 ratings, whereas, um, you know, the Underground Railroad, published 2016, had 149 thousand sixty nine ratings so uh you can see which book has probably plugged in more with the conversation what the what we as as a collective as people are interested in regardless of the literary merit of either book is is you know there's you is it is underground railroad you know 10 times 20 times the book that uh uh, less is, I'm sure there's some people who would argue that, and maybe other people would say, no, they're actually quite, they're comparable. Um, they're having two different conversations, and obviously people are a lot more interested in the Underground Railroad conversation uh, than the Less conversation. Does that, but I, you know, and there's that, and then there's literary merit. I, I it's one of these things of, I, I, I'm, I take a very sang, sanguine attitude to all, all this. It's like, you know, People say, "Oh, we're 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 doing too much stuff as special interest groups," or "Oh, we're you know we're making things of about you know it's you've you've got to be this kind of a you've got to be this race or you've got to be this gender or you've got to be this you know you it, it, to be it's like I, I I do think there is a thing of just there's a collective thing of people just go yeah that didn't interest me or yeah I picked that book up and it was ter terribly written and I put it down and I didn't talk about it if something gets picked up. And it gets talked about the Underground Railroad, and you get talked about, and it engages, and everybody's doing a video about it, or everybody's writing a review on it, and it it percolates up, and it probably gets made into a movie. You know, all the things that are just that cultural, that cultural frizz where something like less, it's like, you know, much less people read it, much less people talk about it. That is an equally valid that that I think is an equally valid judgment. That is how literature. That's the messy way that literature is made. That's the messy way that um, a book that I really enjoyed. I, I there's for everything that makes me frustrated about less, and that actually I think is actually it's a good part of this conversation. Um, in its own very kind of, it's a funny book, and I think you got to be watched. People's like th that light. Oh, it's light. It, it's effervescent. Oh, it didn't really make much out of an impact. It's like I think it's being. I think that's a part of its genius. I think that's a part of its great comic value. Is I, I'm, I'm actually after after having read the book and being kind of underwhelmed and angry at the book, but then going out and listening to the limited small amount of conversation about it. It actually makes me rise the book in my es estimation. And actually, funnily enough, probably the person who's made me uh, value or thought, think, oh, actually, this book may have more to it, 
is Matthew, <laughs> is the negative viewpoint, uh, the, the person who's like, this book pissed me off. That's the viewpoint that's actually made me go, oh, you know, this book uh, might actually have more to it than I thought so in the first place, um, which is interesting, which is interesting. But that's the thing. Uh, if it's only Matthew, it's like this, if the book has a failure, is it didn't piss off more people. That's, I, you know, I, I think if it pissed off, had pissed off more people uh, and had there was more discussion, that would be, um, you know, maybe it wasn't, it wasn't biting, it wasn't disrespectful, didn't poke enough, poke enough things enough to uh, to get to uh, get the conversation really going, and thus maybe it will be a forgotten Pulitzer. I mean, you know, not everything can be, you know, the the color purple as uh, or the Underground Railroad as uh, as um, Matthew Matthew said in in his in his video, which I totally recommend you go and go and listen to, and uh, it may either talk you out of reading the book, or maybe perhaps like me, it'll talk you into liking the book liking the book more or, or engaging with the book more. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, and uh, speaking of that, you know, it's interesting. Um, no, no, I'm just going to leave it there. I could go, go off and off, but yes, let's just leave on that. Go watch Matthew's video. That's, that's, that's my, my main takeaway from all this. It'll, if you've, especially if you've read, if you've read less, if you haven't read less, uh, um, I don't know if this in my review or Matthew's review or Steve's, Steve's recommendation should probably be what should push you actually towards, uh, reading this if you, if you are, but, uh, um, yeah, whether that will boost the book or not. Uh, cause like, I think you should read it and be upset with it <laughs> if you want to be, I was, that's how I, that's where I was at. So, uh, very, very rambly here at the end, but yes, that's my totally not blind hundred and page 112 tag. A video which isn't a tag uh, it's just me reading page 112 and then babbling for a while that's a long title for a video i'll come up with something more pithy more videos later